Hello, it's Sarah. I just have a couple things I want to share with you guys. I uh, did a project this weekend and it is basically a Bible book cover. That's what this is. Um, my friend Patricia had given this to me to use as a template back when I was doing the Midori's, the faux Dories and stuff. Um, but since I've been playing with my fabric, I've been trying to come up with things that I can stitch or sew or make out of these um, pieces of canvas that I've painted, you know. So um, I thought for a Bible cover, I was going to do this, but I thought that's a little bit much probably. Uh, but I definitely want to use this, and I may just make a book cover for it, you know. Um, you don't have to use it for your Bible. It's pretty simple. The way I made this is so simple to sew. Uh, you can make it to any size book you have. You know, you just measure. Anyway, I'll show you. So what I did was I used the blue, the blue duck cloth, because this is canvas. Um, this is the blue. And I think duck cloth, someone left a very good description of what duck cloth is in my comments. Um, listen, I'm no fabric expert. I just, you know, I knew it was denim like. It's, it's stiff. It's like canvas. Um, so it's good for painting on. I think today I am going to go get a couple, uh, I'm going to go get some tote bags or something. I want to go, I want to do continue painting on this um, a bit more. Before I move on, and I will, I want to do some more dragon's eyes. I've got this on my desk for inspiration, but I want to make some more little dragon's eyes. And um, because Game of Thrones is my, I love Game of Thrones, and I'm very inspired by Khaleesi and her dragons. Um, so, anywho, this is what I did for my Bible cover. And I'm sure you guys would still think it's pretty bold for a Bible cover. Um, my thought was blue, the blue duck claw, and excuse me, my Bible has seen better days. This thing is toe up. Um, I think it's been a couple generations and uh, anywho. So it's the blue duck cloth and I was thinking keep it blue, keep it kind of celestial, spiritual. I was thinking I could put an angel on here, paint an angel, which I still may do uh, based on that little angel, this guy. Is he here? Yeah. This little angel that I did. I don't know. It's kind of cartoony, but it's cute, you know? I think so. I could put that on there, something like that. Uh, but I ended up doing this because I'm really into this just mark making techniques that I've been doing um, with all different color uh, or types of paints, metallic paints. So this has a lot of metallic and I have silver and gold, but then I definitely put some blue metallics. There's a little purple like lavender metallic on here and white and actually this is Payne's gray. It's not black, but it looks black. And I just had fun. I just have fun and I just did that. So I cut everything first. I cut this size first and I cut these two extra pieces and then I stitched everything together um, after. And I used grow grain ribbon, just something I had in my stash, which I mean, I, I don't know that I would, it just, I wanted something quick and it's what I had. Uh, and I only stitched it on with one stitch. I think it, when I do it again, I'll double back over the, over the ribbon. When I'm going down, I'll double back over and make sure that it's like double, double stitched in there. Because, um, you know, I mean, depending on the book, you just want to be able to have, know that it's not going to pull out or tear. Um, it's a very simple construction. I didn't do any, like on this it has things are hemmed um, and I didn't do any of that because I just figured the, the canvas is a strong enough fabric that it'll hold and it looks neat enough and I didn't do it but they do have the um, 
the thread, what is it called? The thread, thread tack or something like that. I, I need to do that, but that keeps it from fraying. But I kind of like the idea of it fraying. It just seems a little more natural. Um, but anyway, this is, this is how that turned out. I like it. So this side already has some fraying going on. Um, but I love it. I think it turned out so cool. So yeah, I think you could do any size book. You just need to measure it like this. Make sure you have enough fabric covering both sides. So I, I gave myself at least a half an inch on both sides here because I knew I was going to stitch it a quarter. And then your pocket would be deep enough to still hold the, uh, the book cover. All right, so maybe I'll do a tutorial on that. It's very, very simple. It is not hard at all. Um, and like I said, I'm not a begin. I mean, I'm not a, an expert um, sewing person. So I really wanted to keep it simple and raw looking, so it doesn't look finished or necessarily neat. I mean, it's pretty neat. I did end up cutting the edges if there was if the fabric didn't line up. But it, it was simple. It turned out pretty pretty easily. So um, that was that. I did that yesterday. And then on Saturday I was playing with this little jelly plate. This is the one that I got at AC Moore in their um, art department. Um, it's, it says student. It's 5 by 5 But what I thought was uh, it's iCAD time, which is index card a day and I've never done the index card a day uh, but thinking about I've just been with doing all the mixed media and stuff um, remember I was talking about stamping off and um, using sometimes you could use these these pages that you've rolled your brayer off to get rid of the to clean your paint off your brayer you know um, maybe you need a piece of gold paint gold painted paper you could stamp something out of that um, you know you never know what you're going to get and actually cat hand she's one that uses these pages as well she'll come back in here and find something that she just loves and and make it into a piece of art mine are just a mess i'm not neat enough to do that but um, you never know and sometimes i think the briared pages the way the briar goes on to the page it really is beautiful like it makes a very pretty this is just a mess my book <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to use any of this but that is some pretty colors right there look at that um just just you know she also uses index cards that's what I'm getting at so she'll have a stack of index cards on her desk and when she's creating just stamps off her extra paint that she uses onto an index card and the next thing you know she's got all of these backgrounds kind of started um, so that when she wants to do an iCAD which she does do the iCAD now that is I believe it's a, a day you do a, an iCAD oh, Jesus index card a day for all of June and all of July, July. so it's just a way for us to um, be creative just a little whatever you want to do creatively on an index card a small space but I just decided to um, jelly plate these to jelly print them and it was fun and I'm trying to figure out what my style is with the jelly prints because I tend to do more than one color more than one stencil um, oh this one is just brayering off Look how pretty that is. It's metallics. I definitely love the metallic paints. These two I painted black first. So I based them black. Oh, I also did these little coin envelopes, which these are kind of... I wish I had um, put a base color down first on these because I think that orange color just kind of takes over. This one looks okay. I think I ended up putting white... A lot more white on there so it covered it but this one actually looks usable um, and then this one this was the other I ended up making this into a little I don't know what but this was I also painted this envelope black so 
I like that better. I liked having the black background first. Your color just seems to have somewhere to sit when you do that. But this one just turned out so cool. I just wanted to make it into something. I'll zoom in a little bit. It's just the way I did it. I just kind of hit the corners of the jelly plate with the certain sections of it. Um, I don't know. I used a, a cool stencil with that little flourish in it and just... I don't know it just turned out super cool and then it's also got that glitter in it because I put the fluorescent pink on the jelly plate and I actually have that all stuck to my brayer now and I'm not sure how that's gonna work in the future but we shall see um and so yeah I just made and this I believe is something that Cat Hand did as well she had much bigger envelopes now all this stuff that I'm using I've had in my stash forever like I buy I would buy things at Walmart just thinking I was going to use them these are huge index cards had them had the smaller ones had the envelopes but I didn't have um yeah see I do I have these I could have done a couple of these these are bigger the bigger um envelopes to do like uh happy mail anyway uh this one just turned out so cool. I ended up stitching a little signature in here, hand stitching. I stitched around the edges just for decoration and sewed a button on and uh, using the floss. I just used the floss and wrap it around twice. Oops. And I just like tied a little bear to the end of the string, like a little uh, bead. I won't use it for anything, but I just thought it was too cute to just put back. I don't know. It's a, it's a cute little book now. And this paper, it, it really almost feels like fabric, so it went right along with my little fabric theme. Um, that, but yeah, this is basically what that would look like. Isn't that pretty? I might want to do more of these. Um... I haven't jelly printed, well I did, that's a lie, I did jelly print on these two pieces of fabric and I wasn't impressed. This is, uh, I didn't love, I mean this just came out so, ugh, like muddy. I don't know if it's the colors I chose, this is stamping that I was cutting, I was carving some stamps and wanted to see it. And then this one came out decent. Um, mainly I did a pink, all pink, and then I came back and just hit it here and there with some green, and I did some stamping over. I'll paint over these completely. I, I don't, there, there's nothing thrilling about these that I would ever think of keeping them necessarily. Um, but that's what I did over the weekend. I'm still playing with paint, um, but I do, I want to get back to, I want to make some more t dragon's eyes. And I'll probably do a tutorial when I do. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to go have a ride, go for a ride over to Michael's and see if they have some, I'm hoping they have some denim colored, um, totes. But if not, uh, White is fine, and then I'll just have to base it, put that under color underneath. I just like having the under color. See, there's some of the blue duck cloth under here, but I think I actually did it with Payne's Gray with, the, um, with my gift card. So, all right, you guys. Thanks for watching.